outro cast. Ben. Thanks, Alan. Hi. Ben, I am a fan for about 15 years now. Came oh, up condolences. <laughs> I think I'm like millions of people came on board with Cease to Begin, but the new record, first album in five years, how long has it been done for? Oh, man, it's a really hard question to ask because it was done, we thought. We had it tracked and mixed and all that um, in a different kind of, a whole different track list. And then it was like, man, this isn't good enough. We're going back to the drawing board. Um, so I guess it was it was done then around like 2016 and a half. I don't know. And then we wow. went back and redid some stuff. And then, uh, yeah, tracked new songs, uh, mixed it with a different mixer, all this stuff. And um, that was done right before the um, coronavirus madness happened. Wow. Okay. So this is the rare case where an album was redone, not because of an A&R guy telling you they didn't hear a hit. No, it's because the singer is a uh, pain in the butt. <laughs> well, oh! I mean, he's excited too. Uh, or is that a she? Dude, that's a she, but still. What the hell, man? Shit, we're on the dang thing right now. <laughs> well, do you have a favorite song from the album? In other words, a song that made the original cut into the new cut of the album, and you go, this is my anthem, this is what it's based around? Wow. Um, wow, that's, that's a good question. Um, there's so many of them that were, like, kind of hanging on, like, like kind of like pilot fish on a shark, you know, or like those birds on a big rhino, you know, the uh, demos I'd had for a while and different versions. Um, I got to say, I'm really proud of the first single, Crutch, um, because it's kind of the bell cow in a way, not just because it's the first single, but, mm -hmm. um, but because I had originally tracked it here in Charleston with my friend Wolfie. Hi, baby. Um, and he... He like kind of helped me bring out the trash, the more trashy guitar side of the original Band of Horses stuff that kind of got lost in the the washing machine of the business along the way. Mm -hmm. He helped me like remember that is kind of the um, what's well, a big identity of the band, that vulnerability of not being like you know some like virtuoso guitar playing dude. Um, so that one started it off before we went into the first process. And then once that album got kind of shelved, that version got shelved. We went back Wolfie and I and made that song um, kind of what became, well, yeah, the first, the first ringing bell of band of horses are back again. And Dave Fridman was part of the original sessions. Yeah, Jason Lytle and Dave Fridman, just like we had done on the previous record. Um, but it felt like a bit of a rehash uh, sonically, as good as they, I mean, they did amazingly. But it just felt like, maybe it, was, it felt too familiar or something like that. And I needed to step out of the comfort zone. Well, hey, bands do that all the time where they go, that's our producer. Wait, no, that's going to step back. And then two albums later, they come back like the Chili Peppers are now back with Rick Rubin. So it happened. Right. Yeah. It and, and Darren, I can tell you, like, it did feel like, if not now, when do I get to, like, assert myself and and be myself a bit more without someone standing over my shoulder and breathing down my neck? Yeah. Well, Things Are Great is not the only great thing that you've done. Uh, I know a, a little somebody named Jeff Cardoni. And he roped you into the Heels theme song, which yeah. I think is spectacular. And I don't think Thanks. everyone realized that's you singing and co-writing it. Yeah, I got lucky, man. I got lucky. It was it was crazy. They must have been working on something and it wasn't panning out because I know I only had like 48 hours or 24 hours to figure out something to do. Mm -hmm. um, they needed it quick. So it means that usually means that something went south along the way. Because, you know, these things are usually planned out pretty well for a show that big. Um, I was lucky to be asked and flattered, honestly. I, I didn't know Jeff. I didn't know any of those dudes. Um, I just went for it, man. I stayed up that night, wrote a decent enough melody. 
um, with, you know, some sketchy words. And I went down to my friend Wolfie's place the next day. We trapped it in like, I want to say we trapped it in under two hours, maybe less than that. And we were like, wow, we were like, this is enough. Like, this is good. And we sent it off and we're like, well, what should we do for the rest of the night? We actually worked on different songs and like partied a bit. <laughs> wow. It, I guess that explains why it has such raw emotion to it because you weren't overtaking it and overdoing it. it. So it was like a vocal take, like three or four takes and done. Yeah. It was really quick, man. I, we were both, especially having worked together before Wolfie and I, and knowing how meticulous I can be and he can be it. We were both kind of like, is that good enough? Like, should we, but you don't want to overthink things sometimes. Like, yeah, I think that's good enough, dude. Let's do something else. Do you know, and, you know and wait, you want to wait for them to get back to you, of course, before you're like, you know, high five and too much. But uh, it was like a bit eerie, you know, Being I'm sorry. A 48 hour quick turnaround like that. I can't imagine you saw every episode of the show and read every script. That must have been a general direction of, we want something emotional that captures this spirit. Go. I mean, yeah, I think they gave me maybe uh, a paragraph or two describing the story. Mm -hmm. um, but it was enough for me to also conjure um, an, enough imagery to where I thought I could at least dance around the subjects and be, you know, pliable even though I don't know exactly what's going to happen in this show at all. Hmm. And you just announced in the last week or so, a big shed tour, yeah. which it's great to see you playing such big venues as, you know, the second from the top on a package tour. How long did you have to keep it a secret that that tour was happening? Not that long, maybe like, maybe two weeks or something like that. It was exciting. Um, I mean, it is exciting. Yeah. Um, and it's nice to get, just like getting a record out. It's like, get it, get this news off my, off my area. You know, the backpack's full of stuff. Let's go. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's super exciting, dude. Like I love those kind of tours. We've been lucky in the past to do that with like Pearl Jam or, mm -hmm. a, um, you know, Neil Young to some degree, um, my morning jacket. Um, you know, a lot, well, it's, it's strange when you're peers with some of these bands that you, that are so huge, you know, um, but I love playing, well, I love playing 45 minutes to, to an hour and getting kicked off the stage by their crew and, you know, going the hell on the bus and taking three naps a day or whatever. The pressure's not on you exactly uh, in those scenarios. You want to do the best job you can, but you're also kind of, you're a bit like, you're kind of, you're, you're, you, don't got, you don't have like your sound checks like yeah. that. You know, you don't have... Um, you don't have all the pressure of the ticket sales as much, you know, you want to help, you want to help, but you don't have that, that weight on you. Um, and you have more time to do, you know, promotional things in these towns that you wouldn't be in otherwise, you know, radio yeah. stations, different, um, you know, uh, media, and uh, maybe you have time to write more songs too. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that Jones beach, Long Island show you'll be doing. And, my, my, my last topic before I let you go, you've said the name Wolfie a bunch of times, and I know you're not talking about Wolfie Van Halen, uh, Van Halen. you're <laughs> talking about Wolfie Zimmerman, uh, who's yeah. now the third most famous Wolfie on the planet behind, you know, the composer Van Halen, and now your guy. But were Van Halen, Kiss, Motley Crue, was that part of your early musical DNA, or did you start out with cool tastes, like the replacements were the first band you liked and you're the only person? No, sir. I was, uh, I was the, the former there. Um, and that I had like, I, I, I got like circus magazine hit parade, all these metal magazines, you know, I had like metal, I'd cut them out meticulously. I had all my metal heroes, like on the wall as a, as a little kid, um, like a little kid. I listened to all that stuff. Um, once I got into like junior high around like 12, 13, that those ages, uh, my brother got me into stuff like Dinosaur Jr. Uh, and Pavement and uh, Mud Honey and that kind of stuff. So I, that was my little fork in the rose around middle school. But I, I definitely was. I mean, I saw I saw Bon Jovi live. I saw White Snake live. Warrant, Skid Row. I mean, I, I mean, as a little kid, I think I was in like fourth grade when I saw White Snake, and my ears that was like my first case of tinnitus. 
where like my ears were ringing all day at school and people couldn't believe I'd been to a concert. So is David Lee Roth the greatest front man of all time? No, no, he's not, but he's very good. He's incredible. Um, but there is, come on, there's no, it's, it's, James Brown is the greatest front man of all time. That is a healthy, healthy answer with <laughs> respect of an age. Well, the bottom line to recap, things are great out March 4th through the wonderful BMG folks. Yes, that sir. Gail's theme song, we're going to be seeing it more on TV with season two coming soon. Uh, you probably now have 20 songs written for the next, next album, which we don't get to hear in two, three years. We'll see. Maybe I can actually get one out quick again. <laughs> and uh, Summer Tour with the Black Keys. Anything we missed here before I let you go? Just Lucille's going to... I thought she was going to get some tummy time. Now she's got some tummy time. That's about it. <laughs> tummy time, the new single from Band of Horses. Coming to the next album, yeah. <laughs> well, That's... thank you so much for your time and, and the many years of great music. And, Thanks, uh, Darren. Looking forward to whatever is next. Thank you so much, Darren. It's an absolute pleasure to talk with you, and I uh, hope we'll see you soon. Outro.